Good morning and welcome to Greater St. James AME Church School. We're delighted that you're joining us today. Before we begin our lesson, please join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, into your divine presence we come, Lord, thanking you for another day's journey. Lord, as we open our hearts to receive your word today, we ask you to touch us. And God, you, we ask that you help us to understand the truth of your word. Help us to draw nigh unto you as you promised you would draw nigh unto us and help us to walk in confident love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now, our lesson today is confident love, confident love. Our lesson scripture is coming from 1 John 3, verses 11 through 24, 2 John 4, verses 4 through 11, 3 John the fifth through the eighth verses. The key verse, all who obey his commandments abide in him and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. First John three twenty four. I will read the focus scripture. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning that we should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brothers righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or sister are murderers. And you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has this world's good and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have the boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. What a wonderful passage today. And let me remind you that there's that word again, abide. So if you are following along on Facebook, would you please just share in the comments section, what does abide mean? We talked about that last week, but share and be reminded of the importance of remaining connected to our power source. And now the introduction. The author of today's scriptures is John, the son of Zebedee. John is the author of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, the Gospel of John, and the Book of Revelation. A member of Jesus' inner circle, John is also referred to as the disciple whom Jesus loved. According to John 13, 23, John was one of the longest surviving apostle, and therefore the last with eyewitness accounts of Jesus' life and earthly ministry. Admonishing Christians in Asia, Asia Minor to be confident and self-assured about the gospel to which they had been converted was John's purpose in writing what is known as the love letters. 
The love letters comprise three books, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. John was seriously concerned about the influences of the Gnostics. Therefore, John wrote the letters to reassure believers. He wanted believers to remain confident in the teachings and faith foundations that brought them to believe in Jesus Christ and salvation. John 3.16 capsulizes those beliefs. Now, when you think about this message of love, how do you know something is important when you're in a class, when you're in a, in a learning experience, whenever someone is repeating it over and over again, that means repetition really means confirmation of what is important. What have we been talking about for this past few um, Sundays? Love. Now I hear you out there, I already know, when you look at what is going on in the land, what is God asking of us to do? Demonstrate confident love. Love will change the world. Love will make this world actually see Jesus Christ. And that's our responsibility. So let us begin to just think about how we can just act on what we're sharing today. And now, telling the Bible story. Hospitality, even for early believers, was a hallmark of Christianity. Therefore, they regularly invited itinerant missionaries and teachers into their home. Unfortunately, false teachers were among their guests and they took advantages of opportunities to spread false teachings. Our next section, do not be deceived. John begins 1 John by laying the foundations for recalling who Jesus is, his divine ministry and mission, and particularly Jesus being the Word incarnate, as well as our advocate. Looking at believers as having been adopted into God's family, John emphasizes how love, a new commandment, begins a seal of each believer's new identity. He then focuses on alerting believers to the very fair, very presence of very presence and threats of Antichrist, and how living as Christians make us easily identifiable targets for deception. Nevertheless, John closes chapter two with assurances that believers have no reasons to be deceived. The anointing that you receive from Jesus Christ abides in you. And so you do not need anyone to teach you. In essence, be confident in what you believe and have been taught. Love is like cement that bond believers together in unity as one in Christ Jesus. This has always been foundational to the growth and the development of the church. Loving one another is John's focus in 1 John 3, 11 through 15. Using Cain and Abel as examples, John encourages his believers to understand how hatred and greed, even murder, can overshadow commandments of love. The love test is our next section. John operationalizes his teaching on love by describing it. In other words, here is what love looks like. Unsurprisingly, John uses Jesus as his role model and encourages believers to demonstrate love likewise. It is a challenge to act on Jesus' command to pattern our love for each other after his love, which he has shown us. John's message is also reflective of Jesus declaration that no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. John also employs the Apostles James teaching about faith without works to facilitate his desire to emphasize the importance of seeing godly love as an 
action term instead of just a feeling and emotion. Keep a clear, keep your conscious clear is our next section. John has reiterated the truth to do other than what we know to be the will of God is sin. I'll just read that one more time. To do other than what we know to be the will of God is sin. In addition to the word of God, we have the Holy Spirit to guide us. The Holy Spirit convicts us when we deviate from God's truth. John uses the word heart instead of conscious to emphasize personal responsibility to act in accordance with the leadings of the Holy Spirit, as well as the faith God has entrusted us to have. The heart or conscious is like a, an internal GPS or navigation system that alerts us when we waver from the truth. When the heart or conscious condemns us, we have two, two choices. We can either ignore the warnings and deceive ourselves, or we can heed the warnings as an impetus for repentance confession and restoration to the will of God. This lesson is so powerful in that God's love constrains us. When you have such a love for God, you are constrained in so many times to follow after his will. So that's one of the things that um, I just want to reiterate is that seeing godly love as an action term, it's important us for us to see God's love as an action term instead of an emotion or feeling. I want to go very deeper. I want to go deep. You say you love God. We say we love God, but we do not even look up to say thank you for his breath, eyes to see, ears to hear, thanking him for life, thanking him for all of the blessings. When you love someone, you let them know how you feel. Praise to God is our way of bestowing adoration and our love toward him. Waking up, in the morning saying, God, I love you. Tell him how you feel. Tell him that you praise him. That's one of the things that is so important when we talk about that connection. How do you have a relationship if you don't communicate? And we communicate with him through our prayer, through our praise, and we also show that we love him through our actions and our walk and uh, conversations. And now we're going to talk about one of the most amazing women I think that God placed on the earth in our area called in our section called the St. Kofa. Her name is Sojourner Truth. So let us begin. Sojourner Truth is a noted former slave who became a powerful advocate for human rights, including the abolishments of slavery and women's rights. She could not find complacency in knowing she had been free from slavery. Sojourner used her freedom to change the lives of others who needed to be delivered. In her own words, Sojourner attributed her transformation to her religious conversion, like many other I'm sorry, like many earlier disciples, upon conversion, she changed her name from Isabella to Sojourner. Even her perceptions of life events changed. When the slave master referred to her as a runaway slave who gained freedom, Sojourner corrected him using her own voice and God-given power. She insisted, I did not run away. I walked away by daylight. As a converted Christian, Sojourner became an itinerant preacher who engaged heavily in the anti-slavery movement, as well as the women's rights movement. Sojourner delivered her famous Ain't I a Woman speech at the 1851 
Women's Right Convention in Akron, Ohio, thus promoting equality for all humankind became a lifelong ministry for her. I want to share with you, there was a poem that had been written many, many years ago, and the poem really is about the dash. And it talks about your birth date, the date of your birth, and the date of your death. And I would like to just ask each one of you, as well as I'm going to do it too, think about what are you doing with your dash? What are you doing in the moments that you have between your birth and the time of your earthly transition? I certainly hope that we are doing some of the things that Jesus Christ has done, that Sojourner Truth has done, to show the love, to speak the truth in love, and to make a difference in the spaces that we're in. There are some areas that only you will have opportunities to walk in. There will be areas that only I will have opportunity to walk in. But as the Holy Spirit and God leads, as we move into these spaces, how are we demonstrating confident love? I do believe that Sojourner Truth had to know the love, to speak the love, and also show the love. So for our um, remaining time, we're going to ask you all to just go through the case study in your reflection this week, in your Bible um, study time, as you will hear more about the love letters that uh, John wrote, as well as um, some information about the slave Bible. And um, so you can see how far um, the Lord has brought the African-American people. And now, the life application. As with our previous sessions, Today's scriptures point to the need for an active, liberating faith that is fueled by love. Jesus modeled the highest dimensions of love and commanded us to love in the same way. Loving this way is neither easy nor normal for humankind. Even as babies, selfishness is present and easily detectable. Selfishness changes only through acceptance and allegiance to the gospel as we submit our sovereign, to our sovereign God. Conversion leads to our becoming new creatures in Christ and adoption into God's family. The transformation is a life-giving process directed by God to shape us into becoming more and more like Jesus. John's messages to the churches in Asia Minor are, equal, are equally as relevant to us today. It is imperative that we know what we believe and why we believe what we do. As modern technology and increasing diversity with, I'm sorry, modern technology and increasing diversity, we are bombarded with many unorthodox teachings about salvation. Although we might find many to be appealing, it is essential that we determine whether they are consistent with the gospel. Messages change, but neither God nor God's word will change. Many other scriptures support John's message. The following by the Apostle Paul is one example. Keep alert. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Let everything you do be done in love. There is um, very, there's a, there's a area here. I just want to read again. And it says the transformation is a lifelong process directed by God to shape us into becoming more and more like Jesus. So as I talk to young people who are new in the faith, and a lot of times when we uh, would, would be in the service, after the sermon, there would be the invitation to Christian discipleship. So oftentimes I do share with um, people who have given their hearts to the Lord. I keep sharing with them, salvation is instant. 
sanctification, becoming more like Jesus, becoming who he wants us to be is a process. It is a continuous process of which you can look at someone and say, I want to be strong in my faith like them. You keep moving closer and closer to God. That's how you become strong, by making sure you absorb the things of God. Check, check out what you're eating. Check out what you're consuming. Check out what you're listening to. I often share too, these are gates. You've got your eyes, you got your ears. These are gates. What are you putting in them? What are you allowing in your gates? And when you say, I want to grow in him, how are you going to grow in him when you don't put anything in your gates that even resemble him? So I want to share that with some of the younger uh, sisters and brothers in the faith. Keep connecting so you will see the growth. Don't compare yourself to anyone because your journey is your journey and God judges all men and he is the only judge. So even if you fall down, jump back up and keep running toward the Lord who loves you with an everlasting love. And now our question, how alert are you to the possibilities of encountering false teachers. Now, let me share with you, if you, you have to know what's true in order to determine what's false. That's why it's important to continue to stay connected to the truth of God's word. So you can understand that even if something's false, you can say, ah, that doesn't sound right. And if it doesn't sound right, usually it's, you gotta go get a little deeper look and check it out. Also, don't be afraid to ask your, the people who you believe can be your um, role models in God. Ask the, ask the pastor, ask your class leader, ask the people who you can look up to if something doesn't seem right that you have heard. Question number two, how will you determine whether to trust new or different interpretations of the Bible. Now, God's word will not change. You have to understand he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God will not change. His word will change us. So the closer we get to the word you cannot be in his word and remain the same it's transforming it has a powerful transforming effect um, so all of the new interpretations I will say they are revelations God can offer revelation and when I say that insight clearer understanding it's like a light bulb will come on if you read a certain scripture or if he gives you just a wonderful example of how to better understand it but when you're starting adding things to the word you, we're getting into trouble so you have to pay attention to what is being presented and who is presenting it question number three how do you see love impacting your ability to love people who are different from you. So when you begin to look at people the way God sees them, you see them in the mercy of God's love. You see humanity. And one thing I do believe is that if we can get past this evilness of hatred and racism, I think we will become our better selves. But to see the, um, the ugliness and the atrocities of hate, it is something that is not of God. And you have to understand that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and have life more abundantly. And in Christ, in the love of Christ, we can experience abundance. And now, and also if you want to love people, ask God to give you that ability. Confident love confident love. That is what we've shared um, today. We hope you receive something
something out of our lesson today. And we are so grateful that you took time to share with us. I would like to just say to the um, members of the adult class, I thank God for you. I miss you. I remember coming to Sunday school and seeing your eyes and your presence. You encouraged and inspired me in more ways than you ever know. And I just thank God for your steadfastness, your stability in the faith. And I promise you, I believe my life in, in, in this walk with God became stronger because of your example. I hope we will be able to worship again, but I just want to say that I love you all and I miss you all. And uh, I hope we will be together very, very soon. And now, thank you all so much for joining us today. We're glad you're a part of this moment to learn and grow. We're now going to have the closing devotion. Lord, thank you for your patience and kindness with us. Thank you for forgiving our sins and transgressions. Please bless us to forgive and love as you do. We pray for discerning spirits that will enable us to know your truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining this church school moment today. We hope you will have a wonderful day and continue to draw nigh to God as he promised he will draw nigh to us. Take good care.